The Denver Broncos have re-signed wide receiver Lil Jordan Humphrey, but could this be an under-the-radar move that makes the Broncos' offense a little bit better in 2024? We'll tell you why we think so here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Special shout out to everybody in Broncos country, all the everydayers out there. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. It's been a busy week, a lot of bonus episodes here for Broncos country. So do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team every single day, all year long. Because for the true fan, there's never an offseason. I'm Cody York. I cover the Broncos as a reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside by site expert over there, predominantlyorange.com. His name is Sarah Benninger. Better remember that there here. But, folks, one thing we're going to dive deep into here, the Broncos have really made an emphasis so far this offseason on taking care of a lot of their in-house free agents, the latest being them re-signing wide receiver Lil Jordan Humphrey to a one-year deal. And Sarah, you and I were talking before we even began recording this episode. There is, I think, maybe a trend here that when you look at what little Jordan Humphrey has done, like quietly last season, he had a little bit of a bigger impact than most people are going to acknowledge in the playing time that he did have. But there's so many different pieces about the Broncos offense that maybe don't paint the full picture. And I think little Jordan Humphrey, with his size, with his experience, he could be a guy that maybe helps the Broncos offense in a little bit of a big way this year. Yeah, he was really interesting last year, wasn't he? 13 catches on just 16 targets, or not, I think it was 19, maybe 19 targets. Either way, he caught a high volume or a high percentage of the passes thrown his direction. Three of them went for touchdowns, had the big play late in the season when Jarrett Stidham was the quarterback, the 50, I think it was 54 yards, Cody, moved the chains on a couple of occasions where you're like, man, let's get this guy the ball a little bit more. I mean, I'm not trying to overhype little Jordan Humphrey. You and I, we're not going to try to overhype little Jordan Humphrey, but he is known Cody by, I think this coaching staff as being one of the better blockers on the team. And, and I know yeah. that, look, I mean, the, he's got the size to be able to do it. That was one of the biggest advantages the Broncos had signing him in the first place. You watch him play when he was on the saints, on the Patriots, he gets out as a blocker and he finds work as a blocker that's big time in Sean Payton's offense so there's things that go beyond box score that I think make him a valuable asset to this team but you and I were talking it's like the passing game for the Broncos was so inconsistent last year let's I guess it, let's call it that inconsistent that you didn't really get a good look at a lot of these guys it's hard to really say like well, what is the the cap that little Jordan Humphrey is capable of in terms of being a number three or number four receiver? Like, we just didn't see great ball distribution. We didn't get a great look at Jerry Judy. We didn't get a great look at Brandon Johnson or the tight end position or little Jordan Humphrey. I mean, it's it's going to require a, a little bit more of a consistent passing attack to be able to say definitively, here's what the Broncos have. Let's say they can double or even triple his targets, Cody. Give him somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 targets next season, I think Lil Jordan Humphrey could maybe be a, a little bit of a second coming of what Tim Patrick was a few years ago for the Broncos. And what we saw from Tim a few years ago before he really emerged into kind of this household name you and I were just talking about as well, I, I think, I can't remember who, I think it was Case Keenum who was the quarterback. Remember the Broncos had the home game against the uh, now Las Vegas Raiders, previously Oakland Raiders, and it was in the final two minutes. The Broncos needed to drive Tim Patrick, key catch that moved the chains for a first down, broke a tackle, got out of bounds, set up the game-winning field goal. And then from that point, we started seeing Tim become a little bit of a big, reliable pass-catching option there. He wasn't the primary option in all in that offense. He was more so of a, a role player in that sense. And I think that's where we started to see, like, okay, like you don't have to be the premier guy to have a big impact. And I think little Jordan Humphrey last year in those final stretch of games, go to the Detroit Lions game, there were moments where he had some big catches, right? Some chain movers for a first down or a couple of touchdown catches. The one against the Detroit Lions, that was a tough grab. They got the Broncos a little bit back into it. Unfortunately, Denver's defense couldn't stop anybody. And then you have that catch against the Los Angeles Chargers at home where you have two guys that the Broncos have re-signed, former Sean Payton guys, Michael Burton with the crazy block that helped really spring things open and little Jordan Humphrey doing the rest by getting downfield. To me, I feel like 
this is a solid under the radar signing because I think he can impact you in terms of your receiving department with the guy who's got experience, but he's also going to be a key guy that plays special teams as well. And that's another dynamic that sometimes gets lost in the mix of this. The Broncos also view little Jordan Humphrey as one of their best special teams players as well. So for me, this isn't a move that says, okay, well, you know, Denver is just comfortable with, you know, the guys that they have. I feel like there is a level of comfort there, but I think little Jordan Humphrey can bring more to the table than what we saw from him last season. And I think that's a big selling point here for Broncos country. And look, you and I have talked about this as well in free agency, the buildup to it. Do not expect Denver to go out there and make a ton of big splashes and add like 10 or 12 guys that are not on the team previously in 2023 expect them to take care of a lot of their in-house guys, expect them to do a lot of good value deals at one or two year deals with good financial value. This doesn't hurt the Broncos in any way and gives them, I think a little bit more upside when it comes to their receiver room. If in fact they can get a quarterback under center this year, that can be an effective passer. I do think this move will help the Broncos. I do too, Cody. I really do. I think that you talk about little Jordan Humphrey being, there's maybe a little more than meets the eye there. I was as we're researching some of this uh, 2018 Texas roster, Cody, as the Broncos continue to add from that group, <laughs> uh, I noticed that little Jordan Humphrey actually returned some kicks back in those days. So, I mean, he does have a versatile skill set and guys that return kicks typically are trusted because of their vision, their field vision, their ability with the ball in their hands to create plays. I think there's some untapped potential there. And, and don't get us wrong. Obviously, Cody and I were talking about this. Uh, I mean, I'm taking a very optimistic approach with a guy like Lil Jordan Humphrey because I think we saw reasons to be optimistic last year. We saw three touchdowns on 13 catches. We saw big plays. We saw him do things on special teams. We saw him make an impact as a blocker. There's so many different things that he's willing to do, but this is a team guy, right? I mean, yeah. how many times was Lil Jordan Humphrey brought up and down from the practice squad last year as the Broncos played roster gymnastics? I mean, he's one of those guys that, I mean, he's a team friendly guy. He's somebody who understands like I have a role on this team and and I'm willing to to do whatever is needed to be able to make an impact. And you love have you have to have guys like that on your 53. We talked about it with Michael Burton. We're talking about it with Lil Jordan Humphrey. He's a role player. Absolutely. Should we temper expectations? I guess maybe whatever that means for you. But I think we talk about a guy who had three touchdowns on 13 catches. He's capable of handling a little bit bigger of a workload in the passing game. We'll see if that comes to fruition here for the Broncos as they look to continue to build out their wide receiver room. And right now, they got a lot of wideouts in that receiver room. How does little Jordan Humphrey return maybe impact the overall view of the wide receiver position as NFL free agency continues and maybe even ahead of the NFL draft? We'll break that all down here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event if you're worried that you're going to run out of tickets. If you're a last-minute buyer like myself, sometimes I like to go up to the clock to debate, do I want to get out of the house tonight? Do I want to go see this event? And sometimes you go to pull up the tickets and, oh, sold out. Or the prices, they rise there. Game Time alleviates some of these issues inside of their app. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, the music, and comedy and theater events that are going on near you with killer last-minute deals all in prices plus views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets, and Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more near you. With zone deals, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for big-time savings. And the Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKDOWN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match, 
This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Are the Denver Broncos good with their wide receiver room as is the addition or re-addition of Lil Jordan Humphrey kind of raises some questions going forward about whether or not the Broncos are set, what they need to do to add to this room and how they're going to construct this position group in 2024. Cody and I are going to break down what the Lil Jordan Humphrey re-signing could mean for the Broncos at wide receiver this year on today's bonus episode, Locked on Broncos. And hey, Tune in every single day. For you every dares out there, you know Cody and I are covering every single move. We may just stop recording and, and the Broncos re-sign, I don't know, little Jordan Humphrey. And we record a bonus episode to be able to discuss the moves with you every single, you know, every single nook and cranny of this roster. We're going to cover all offseason on Locked on Broncos. And we appreciate you rocking with us free and available everywhere that you get your podcasts. Cody, I kind of want to throw out a hot take here to begin this because I know that Little Jordan Humphrey is not going to get 150 targets this coming season or anything like that. But you see the Broncos, they went and they made the move to re-sign Tim Patrick. We've seen the the cryptic posts by Cortland Sutton all offseason on his various social media accounts. Do you think re-signing Little Jordan Humphrey could mean that the Broncos are at least potentially open to still dealing Cortland Sutton this offseason? I mean, maybe. Maybe not. It's really hard to tell, right? And I think there's some different things that come out there. And I've seen a couple of people say that Cortland is is good, like Ian Rappaport, got another good friends. Um, obviously Ryan Edwards, obviously uh Al and obviously Dave Logan on KOA and said that, you know, he perceived that, you know, Cortland is fine, Cortland is good. So to me, you can interpret that a multitude of ways, whether or not it means Cortland is all right with everything now. Like, you know, maybe the team reached out, maybe they talked to him and build them in on their plan that they had and he's good to stay here for this final season or like he's just he, he's fine like he's just depending on like he may stay he may go he's fine with whatever I don't know how to interpret that I don't think Cortland goes anywhere though to be honest with you I think that you have a good selling point here you have two six foot five receivers in Cortland and Tim you have a six foot six tight end Lucas Kroll and now you add in a six four six five receiving threat as well and Lord Jordan Humphrey like size is something that matters a lot here to Sean Payton but I also find it a little interesting here Sarah because usually as you go into training camp there's probably about 14 15 total wide receivers that are usually on the roster as we're sitting here recording this episode the Broncos currently have nine players on their roster going into 2024 at the receiver position now first off let's talk with the star star studded lineup here Michael Bandy who spent some time on the practice squad last year you have him Philip Dorsett, who's got speed dynamic to him that really is kind of, in my opinion, if the Broncos have a plan for Marvin Mims and there's something that happens with him, Philip Dorsett is the replica of, I think, what you want to have there unless you add a guy in the NFL draft. Then you have little Jordan Humphrey, who we talked about. Brandon Johnson, who the team is very high on still, coming off of a, an impressive performance. He missed some time last year due to injuries, but he actually had, I think, an accelerated process in his development in 2023. I'm excited to see if he can do that a little bit more. Marvin Mims, as we talked about, is going to have a more featured role here, according to Sean Payton. And the reason he wasn't, it was on the coaching staff, apparently. That's what Sean told us at the NFL Scouting Combine. You have Tim Patrick coming back, Cortland Sutton, David Sills, who Sean Payton likes a lot for the Broncos and maybe an underrated role there. And then I think a guy we all forget about, Jalen Virgil, fully healthy after suffering that really bad meniscus tear in the preseason, was on track to make the 53-man roster, a speed dynamic guy. He's also back in the fold here for the Broncos. So right now, I think like Denver's wide receiver room looks pretty solid. Do you feel like they should still maybe add a guy in the free agency market or should they focus on maybe adding one or two pieces in the NFL draft? I think they should go with both. Honestly, I think they still need to add to this room, Cody. Obviously, you've got some guys that you feel comfortable with, some guys who understand the offense, guys who spent last year on the practice squad or, or learning the offense like Jalen Virgil, I'm sure getting all those mental reps that he possibly could. There's also a little bit of upside there. You expect an increased role for Marvin Mims, but I would go out and I would upgrade this position, at least in terms of raising the floor. Once again, I use that term a lot. 
But I think you can give yourself opportunities to do that, to raise the floor by saying, hey, we're going to take a shot at at upside or we're going to go after a veteran. You and I were talking before we started recording today, just like I really like the idea of of stealing Hunter Renfro after the Raiders cut him, um, which they're expected to do at the beginning of the league year. And he may have signed somewhere already by the time this episode premieres. Who knows? But I like that idea of somebody like him, somebody who's capable of getting open very quickly because Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, Lil Jordan Humphrey, those guys aren't exactly known for their ability to separate at the, you know, at the point, right? At, right at the line of scrimmage and right off press and things like that. They they create separation at the catch point. They're big bodies, big catch radius. They can do stuff after the catch. That's what they're known for. How about somebody like Hunter Renfro to really differentiate at your wide receiver position? Somebody who's quick and shifty in that slot who can get open, move the chains, extend drives, help you out in the red zone, help maybe in the return game. As you ex you expand Marvin Mims's role, Cody, you're going to need some help in the punt return game because he's probably not going to return punts. Maybe somebody like Renfro, who's very good at that, could help you in that area as well. So I just think there's going to be options. The wide receiver market is moving very, very, very slowly in free agency. Maybe the Broncos could take advantage of that a little bit by going after somebody who may have thought to, you know, you thought maybe this guy's going to command a really high price. Now you can get him at a team friendly price. I would not be opposed to that. And I'm never opposed to taking darts in the NFL draft. Well, it's crazy to see how bad Josh McDaniels ruined what we all had the perception of with Hunter Renfro, like Hunter Renfro at one point, like every time the Broncos played the Raiders, you know, we were always like, ah, you got to worry about this guy because he's so elusive. Like he can hurt you in the slot. He can do all these everything. He's a good route runner in the red zone to give you opportunities that you need to find ways to score. And, you know, maybe that does come to fruition here for Denver. Uh, I think another thing we want to touch on, little Jordan Humphrey sat down with our good friend, Mike Pliss had a conversation with him in terms of him returning to Denver, said this, we had conversations with other teams, but ultimately I want to be in Denver. I love the city. I love the fans and love coach Peyton and the organization. I wanted to go back and they gave me an opportunity to do that. So there is a lot of opportunity, and I'd say right now with the departure of Jerry Judy via trade with you know you bringing Tim Patrick back, his injury history, I think right now there is a lot of opportunity for this Broncos wide receiver room to open up a little bit more with the guys that they have on roster. And as you mentioned, maybe some dart throws in free agency or the NFL draft. We got to ask you this, though, Broncos country, as we conclude today's episode of Locked on Broncos, do you think that Denver should look adding some more players in NFL free agency at the receiver position? Should they focus on the draft? Should they do both? What is your overall perception of Denver's wideout room as it stands with the nine current players that they have? Make sure you let us know here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. We appreciate you so much. Thanks for rocking with us, especially with these bonus episodes that we have going out for NFL free agency. It is a busy time, and this is the place to be. If you want objective Broncos coverage, you want to look at every side of the coin, and you want to maybe look at the bigger picture versus the instantaneous reaction this is the place to be. We'll see you next time, Broncos country, for a brand new episode of the show. Tomorrow, what you can expect, Josie Jewell left the Broncos in free agency for the Panthers. What type of ripple effect does that have on the inside linebacker position? You get that all and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode of the show.